Okay, now that we have set up our camera view, added lighting, and assigned our materials, we are now ready to process the view rendering. First, note that I have set my view to a wireframe display style. This is best for rendering. I'll select the Render Scene icon to open the View Rendering dialog. Previous renderings remain in the dialog. This is one I ran earlier using the Morning Light Setup and the St. Petersburg Atmosphere preset. So first I want to make sure that the view is set to View 1. I have two options for processing renderings. The Path Tracer, which as of now actually processes the PBR materials better and is typically faster than the Ray Tracer. But I'm going to use the Ray Tracer, which can still process the legacy materials. This might be important to you if you have a lot of legacy material libraries that you still want to use. I'll set the resolution of the final rendering. I'm using 1920 by 1080. I'll select the Evening Light Setup. And I'm going to select one of the Atmosphere presets. There is a Cirrus Sunset, which will give me a nice late afternoon sky. Note that you can open the settings for the atmosphere where you can make some adjustments. Note my version is showing as a local copy because I have made an adjustment. I rotated the atmosphere about the Z axis because I wanted to change the location of some of the clouds. Next, I will set the render setup. Again, there are a number of delivered presets. Generally, they go from good to better to best and then extreme each improving the quality and taking more processing time. I made a copy of the delivered exterior better. Note there are two tabs here. I want to select the Ray Tracer tab. I made one change, which is to render PBR materials as their legacy equivalent. I'm also going to turn on two post-processing options relighting, and NPR, or non-photorealistic rendering. You must turn these on before processing the rendering if you want to have these options for post-processing. Now I will process the rendering. Now I have sped this up. It actually took just under 14 minutes to process. There is a previous render tray at the bottom, allowing you to scroll through your renderings as you get them processed. You can delete any you don't want to keep. Now, the first thing I might want to do is adjust the brightness and contrast of the final image. But I do have more post-processing options. I'll expand the post-processing pane so first, some general options. I can change from a colored rendering to a monochrome, for instance. I could add a little color filtering. For instance, I might want to warm the rendering up just a bit. I can also do some color correction, such as adjusting the color saturation. Now let's switch over to the relighting tab. Here, I have all the light sources in the model. I can individually turn lights on and off, or just change their color or intensity. I can also select groups of lights, like all the industrial lights in the coffee shop, and modify them as a group. I could increase their intensity, for instance. And maybe do the same in the station building. Now that's much easier than adjusting all the lights in the model and reprocessing a rendering. Okay, now let's look at the NPR tab. Here I can turn on the Apply NPR Styles to Rendered Image. Again, there are a number of presets, starting with the default. You can also customize the color, thickness, and opacity of the line work. So just for fun, let's try a few of the others and decide which ones you like because there might be a poll question. 
blueprint, chalk on blackboard, drawing, sketch, and of course when finished, the images can be saved to an image file. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.